I just want to present me very quickly. My name is William. I'm a front end developer at eBay. I work in Berlin. I'm Brazilian. Um, so that's all about me. Um, I'm about to show a presentation full of new concepts and a lot of code. So please bear with me. And I hope we're going to have a, uh, some fun and learn uh, in the next 25 ish, 30 minutes and learn it three quarters full. Okay, but first, uh, just a small disclaimer. Um, our proposal I'm about to show here are, are under construction. Uh, the main intention here is to help you to understand the base case uh, that lead to those um, um, proposals and show the huge uh, uh, work that the C39 committee is doing in order to have the syntax and semantics of JavaScript to be shaped in order to have this um, proposed landed on, Java on the next versions of JavaScript. If you have any concerns or uh, you want to um, show your support of uh, a specific feature, please go to this link. Uh, it's open. You can open issue if you have any concern. Put some comments there or put a star if you like the, the proposal. So that said, I present you. So um, I'd like to start the presentation asking a simple but tricky question. What is this? In ECMAScript, this has a different semantic than this in many other languages, because um, in those languages, this uh, often refers to the lexical scope. I will explain. In the global scope, this refers to the glo uh, global object, like um, browser and window, uh, where, uh, web, uh, cell phone, uh, oh, sorry, window and browser, cell phone and web worker, and uh, mod.exports in Node.js. But what's the value of these inside the function? Well, it depends. It depends how the function is called. I will show you um, how this kind of works in just one quick example. So I create this meow component. Which sets up, uh, which just has one property called uh, Paul, which points to, the, to a button element, and then just one method called meow that just console log the, the property. So in the line 15, you can see that I um, um, add an event listen on the click event to the to call the cat dot meow. The problem here is um, when we have a um, um, a method bind in a event handler. The these in there will be the target of the function, not the, the instance of the class itself. So there, there is a problem when I try to console log this meow or no, the uh, meow uh, methods, because this dot point at the moment, this is the button, and button doesn't have pull, so that's why I have undefined. So how to make this predictable? Um, understand the value of this in JavaScript could be tricky, but uh, we can make this um, uh, pre uh, Predictable by using a uh, function on prototype dot bind or the arrow uh, functions. The method bind uh, permanently binds the function to the first given parameter, which is the context, and the arrow function keeps the value of the lexical this of the outer scope. I will explain it by the example. So that previous example you can uh, check on line 15 that I mean just uh, change that get dot, uh, cat dot meow to get meow bind cat. This will return a new function that is permanent, permanently bind to cat. So then uh, this uh, code will run per, uh, as expected. And then with our error function, we can do the same. But uh, as I explained to you, it just uh, doesn't create a new disk, just takes the disk from, from the surround context. Um, although uh, error function solve the majority of the user case uh, where I need to uh, explicitly bind this to a function, we still have two use cases that we need to do this. So the first, um, the first use case is this: whenever I need to um, call on an, uh, a function in with an a no object. Let's suppose that I have, um, for any reason, I have this object on the line two that I'm creating that's not uh, ec um, doesn't extend the the um, object pro uh, prototype. But I want to check if the X property uh, is there by using the has own property from object uh, prototype. Uh, to achieve that, I need to use the function call passing the the as a first parameter context, the second parameter the the, the the argument for the function. It's tricky to understand, right? How do we do this in a more natural way? The second use case is uh, as I explained in the in the um, 
uh, Meow uh, component example. Uh, when uh, whenever I want to 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 for example bind in a, a even even list, I just extract the the, the methods. So to solve these two use case, I will present you the first pr proposal of the of my talk. Bind operator. Um, bind operator consists in, in the introduction of a new operator, um, which is the double column. Uh, with access as a uh, syntax trigger for this use case. So it comes in two forms, unary form and binary form. Um, in the unary form, the operator creates a function which is bind by the um, base provider reference as a this value for the, the function. So uh, this line 8 here will the sugar to cat.meow.bindcat. And then uh, the binary uh, form the operator takes the left part and binds as a context of the right part. Um, so you can see on the line 6 and 10 that this is more easy to understand, right? Um, the cool aspect of binary operator is the fact that it opens a new opportunity for creating virtual method, uh, as you can see uh, in this lib for interrobo, or in a possible implementation RxJS5, or even in a jQuery-like library. So it's super cool because um, the developer doesn't need to download the whole library just to um, uh, do small stuff. Besides, it makes it easier to extend those libraries by using these virtual methods. This is stations, uh, this proposal is in stage zero. Um, I just spoke about uh, the benefits of having virtual methods for, uh, for composition. But with binary operator, we have to rely on this to be bound on my function in order to compose this. But what if we don't want to rely on this to be bound? So let's explore a little bit about this composition without having this. So let's suppose that um, um, I have a request from a manager, whatever, that, uh, that he wants to create a function that receives input, and then I sanitize this, this input. And then after that, I just want to uh, textualize uh, the digits on, on this entry, and then just console after that. Um, to achieve this, this is a... a, a a possible solution for this code. Um, the problem of this is uh, to make it readable in somehow, I need to create all of these intermediary uh, variables just to make it the, um, this, this, um, the result of the previous function as input to the next function. But someone can say, yeah, I can remove all these variables. I can do it better. I can do like this. Yeah. Doesn't seem easy to read, though, because um, the the way the data flows is not the way we read the code because the data flow from the inner line to the outer line and then we read the code from the top down. So how can we do this without this um, intermediary variable or this um, like nested functions? So the answer for this is the next proposal. <laughs> Pipeline operator. <laughs> so pipeline operator is a syntax trigger for those use cases. It creates a way of tr um, to streamline a chain of functions in a readable and function uh, functional manner. It's backwards compatible and provides alternative for uh, extend building proto uh, prototypes. So that um, previous example using pipeline operator will look more or less like this. So you can see that uh, the way uh, the data flow is the same way that you read the code. And this will be the sugar to this. This is nice. So OK, but what if my chain function needs to receive one extra parameter? Because like uh, the way we are using this is all of this function just receive one parameter, or we are just uh, trying to use the first parameter to do something. So let's suppose that uh, this textualized numbers um, uh, has a second parameter, uh, which is a list of numbers that need to be textualized. And, uh, and the manager asks ask us to uh, textualize only zeros and one. So how can you do this with uh, using pipeline chain? 
So we could wrap that function that receives this extra parameter um, using uh, uh, as a uh, with an error function. But you can see in a minimal proposal, we need to uh, wrap the 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 error function with parentheses. Otherwise, we will have a syntax error. So um, we we uh, that is a way to um, uh, work around that. I will explain this later. Okay, but what if my sanitizer function process detects on the server side? So to do that, I can use a, um, a wait, right? But this line too is tricky because I don't know if this would sugar to an a wait for sanitizer function give the, the 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 argument, or an await which awaits for the sanitized fun function to be resolved without any parameter, and then this will return a function, like a curry, and then I put the, 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 uh, the argument there. So it seems that the minimum proposal has some issues that need to be solved in order to have the syntax and semantics uh, accepted. Uh, how, do, how, how we can address those issues? To answer this question, I uh, introduce you the two competing proposals who is trying to uh, address those issues. So first of all, I want to present you <laughs> Smart Pipeline. In the Smart Pipeline proposal, the previous example could be written like the following expression. You can see here that we have uh, two styles, the topic styles and the bear style. Whenever we just need to call the function and, it, uh, and it's just straightforward, what one, just one parameter, I use the bear style. Whenever I need to use curly brackets or parentheses, I need to use the topic style. And then I have this hash, uh, this hash um, uh, token, which will be the, like a placeholder for the, previous, uh, for the result of the previous step to be placed. So just basic rules, two, two, uh, two styles, bare style, topic style. Um, um, uh, whenever I have parentheses and square brackets, I, need to, I, have to, uh, I have to use topic style, otherwise I'll have a syntax error. So what about curry? As I said, uh, just because I'm using parentheses, um, if I uh, use bare style, I'll have a syntax error. For that, I need to use the, the, the topic style. So then... Here comes a new challenge! As a counterpart, I'd like to present you the, uh, the F-sharp pipeline proposal. It just um, extends the minimal proposal with a wait step. And uh, a wait step is just, uh, it just uh, is, a, is a statement that just um, awaits for the resolution of the previous step and then re uh, resolve this as an um, uh, input for the next step. As you can see, oh, OK, as you can see on, on this, OK. Move okay, as you can see on this on this slide. Um, <coughs> although it, it, it's it's simpler than the, the uh, smart pipeline, smart pipeline has a uh, an extensive documentation about like that, uh, um, on, on how to extend this after uh, the the minimal proposal got landed on the on the language. You can check that out on the, on the um, on the link I showed on the beginning of the presentation. But the F sharp is just simple. Just create this a which step and don't care about the, the error function. Um, we can overcome this. Uh, I will show this later. This proposal in stage one. So we were discussing pipeline operator before, and we saw this example of a pipeline step with um, 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 a placeholder, which we can bind the, the, the we have this white card, which we can com um, um, bind the, the previous uh, um, step as an um, input for this step. We can achieve this with partial application, but what is partial application? Let, ex let me explain this first. Um, partial application refers to a proce process of giving a function with a n arity. Um, I return another function with a smaller arity by bound some parameters to a fixed value. Um, Arity by itself is the number of um, parameters that, that a specific uh, function takes. You can check the, the arity of function uh, called the function dot length. This result is the, the number of parameters that the, um, the function can receive. So to work out on, 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 on partial application, I have this example. It's just a simple one that will receive uh, three parameters and just concatenate those and just console log this. And, but um, 
what if I, I, I just have the, the, the grid as a name uh, beforehand and in the location I will resolve by uh, uh, on, on a promise chain? How can I achieve that? Nowadays, maybe we can do like this, we, uh, uh, but that is a problem because I need to create those um, two variables on the top that I um, um, just, it's, it's just that just for hold the, the, the value until I have the problems resolved. So how can we do this? Um, uh, how can we achieve a partial application today? So in ECMAScript, we can do partial application uh, using uh, function bind. Um, we always forget, uh, we always use fun function bind just to bind the context, but often we forget that the, um, the, uh, this method uh, um, accepts extra parameters, and these extra parameters are the uh, arguments for the function that we need to, to we want to bind permanently. So to do that, I can do like this. So the first, the first uh, parameter is the context. I don't want to use that, so I just put as new. But then I want to bind the, the first and the second parameter. This will return a new function that just expect the last parameter, and with the first two bound. And then when I have uh, uh, the the promise resolved, I just use that. Um, but that is a problem. Um, um, I can only uh, I can only uh, bind from the left to the right without jump any uh, parameter. But what if I want I, I have just the name and location and don't have the name of the person? How can I do this? So uh, one can uh, one can say yeah we can use curry for that right? Yes. Although uh, we can achieve partial application by uh, by using curry, curry is not uh, uh, equals partial application. Curry is a function that, given a function with identity n, it returns a function with identity n minus 1. So with this definition, we can write the solution like this. It works, but it's kind of verbose because, one, I don't know if the next, uh, next call, we call the function or just decrease uh, the identity by 1. And two, whenever I want to um, provide the parameters in different uh, order, I need to rewrite this function. Okay. How can we do that? We can use uh, we can use uh, partial application with arrow function. As you can see, there are a lot of ways to do uh, to achieve partial application in JavaScript, but not uh, known on this in a standardized way. So that said, I want to present to the next proposal. Partial application. Partial application proposal creates uh, two new tokens to be placed inside a function call. Whenever you place this, you create the partial application, this function. The question mark for single argument and the ellipsis token for um, uh, um, multiple parameters. Um, the, the, uh, the ellipsis token is not on, on, on the initial spec anymore, but it's there. Let's check how this works. Um, so this is how it, wor it works. Uh, whenever you create a partial application, it bounds the fixed arguments, and uh, in this case, hello and Maria, and then returns a new function just wait and wait for the, the remaining parameters. The, um, the good aspect of it is that's clear to the developer uh, how many parameters and which parameter is expected for the function to be called, which is uh, it's uh, clearer than by using a, a current example. Let's see one more example of it. So. As you can see, it becomes clear to develop to bind um, arbitrary parameters just by placing the, the, the place or not placing the, the, the token there. But wait, there is more. On our initial example is based on this string built by, uh, by the parameters we provide and then the specific uh, function. And I, we return like, a, like we console log like a, um, um, a template string of that. But it turns out by placing and question mark inside the template spring string, it returns a function that I can call after with the remaining parameters. <laughs> Super nice, isn't it? So just quick note about the, the ellipsis token. In this proposal, we have another token uh, I mentioned before, which is the ellipsis token. It works whenever I want to spread the unbound parameters inside the function. It's handy whenever I want to just fix the first or the last parameters of, uh, uh, of that function. And you can only place this ellipsis token once. So quick example on that. Uh, I have this function which is uh, called um, max greater than zero. Uh, and then uh, it's pretty straightforward. Like 
uh, whenever I have a, a bunch of numbers that I send that, uh, it returns a bigger one. But uh, in the last line, as you can see, if I only provide numbers that is small, there's zero, I just ret return zero. This is the way I, I do nowadays. But then uh, using the ellipsis token, I can do like this. Nice, isn't it? So um, just to wrap up with a uh, partial application. Remember last uh, before that I was talking about like the f uh, f a minimal proposal and F sharp uh, pipeline uh, um, proposal that they have this um, arrow function with parentheses that uh, it's kind of a small syntax overhead. So we can use partial application to achieve that. You can check that this line two or oh, line four could be rewritten as this. So that's cool. Um, so um, before I go jump into the last proposal, let's um, do a, a quick recap on conditionals in JS. So JavaScript, until now, we have three ways to do to write conditionals. We have um, if else statement, switch statement, and ternary expression. Just to get the, uh, to help uh, uh, everyone get the, the picture, an expression is something that evaluates to a value, and a statement is something that just does something. And I will quickly show how those three works. Um, if a statement requires a condition, as you can see in this green sh thing, and we will evaluate to truthy or falsy value. If the condition is true, it, it, run, it, ex it executes the adjacent block. If it's not, just the uh, else block, if it exists. Um, but this can get a little more complicated. We can check that out. Um, I um, use this uh, just a weather example that I um, given temperature. I return the 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 emoji that most reflects that temperature. So as you can see here, um, um, whenever uh, uh, when I have the if statement and and the, this if if uh, statement falls to fall uh, to false, then the else statement is again another if statement. So I can concatenate this if statement. This could be very um, tricky to reason about it, and I'm not even talk about like nested uh, if statement. So this kind of a sequential checks, it's a good use case for switch, Swi switch statement. So let's check how that works. So if statement, come on, come back. Um, an if statement is handy whenever we have just a couple of choices or uh, to react to it or a big chunk of code to run inside a, uh, uh, a block. Um, if we have a, a mu uh, multiple choices with just a small set of uh, um, uh, comments to react to it, um, switch statements uh, is a good, uh, a good choice. So just to quick explain the switch statement, I just have seven minutes. OK. Uh, the switch statement works as a following. A given expression inside the parentheses of switch statement, it tries to match one of these case statement values. If it matches, it just enters that at that point and keeps uh, execute until the end. So that's why we have this break statement to jump out. This is just a naive solution, uh, a solution for returning a amount of days of a given month. I'm not, uh, I'm not talking about like, come on, come back. Okay, just imagine. Okay, um, um, and then um, okay, catch up, catch up, catch up. Okay, uh, I'm not talking about like a leap we, uh, years and so. Um, just to show you that I can group a bunch of cases just in, on to one output. This is not um, um, something that we can do on on the daily basis because it's I don't like it. Okay, uh, never mind. Um, so let's uh, let's check how to rewrite that um, um, uh, weather example use switch statement. So as you can see um, here, since I'm returning the value, um, uh, use return uh, statement. I don't need to use break because the return uh, just uh, stop the function at that point. So I will stop the, the switch at that point as, as well. A, and you can check that on line two, I mean switch true, and then uh, the conditionals is in the case statement, because uh, this is a trick that we will, uh, sometimes we use whenever we want to, we have a, a lot of um, different conditions. But yeah, just uh, just to have as, a, uh, as an example. This is pretty neat, I like it. Um, then we have the last one, which is the Turner expression. Um, Turner, uh, Turner expression uh, becomes popular recently because most of the, the functional developers uh, um, they try to write the code with um, as much expression as possible. Um, 
So it basically uh, uh, works as the following. Given a condition, if this condition is true, it executes everything that is between the, uh, uh, just after this uh, question mark. And if it's false, just after the, the, the column. So since ternary, expression, uh, uh, since ternary is an expression, we can use the error function to make the, our weather example more concise. Is it readable? I don't know. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to explain. People like it. Um, as you can see, there are uh, three ways to do conditionals in JavaScript today. What's the matter of the fourth one? Could you imagine uh, what could happen if you mix if statement, switch statement, and the structuring pattern? The result is... Pattern matching. To understand uh, pattern match better, I just create this toy example. Um, we have a list of shapes, and which has a size, color, and type. And we want to log all circles, um, red squares, and big blue uh, triangles. So how can you do this just using if statement? Just to context, uh, context, contextualize, um, this is the sample entry. And OK. Um, this is one potential solution for the problem. It's weak because it can easily be because ha um, hard to reason about as the requirements grows. So, behold, pattern matching. As this um, and this is how how we can um, achieve this with pattern matching. Here, because of the time, I won't explain the core concepts. Um, if you are interested in this. You can uh, you can talk to me later after this talk and or check the documentation. So, this is the case statement. It defines the start of the pattern match statement. Uh, it receives only one um, value or expression as input, and this value is the case expression. Then we have the when clause. Uh, which is divided in some parts. I only um, um, I only showed two of them today, just because of time. Uh, one, two minutes. Okay. Um, and this first clause, uh, we have the match pattern and the when clause body. When the match uh, match pattern we execute um, the match pattern, we execute the the body statement of um, and if the shape of this pattern match with the shape of the expression given, and we will execute the the um, the, the state uh, the block. Otherwise, we go to the next one, go to the next one until the end. Um, so in this line, all the objects which has type circle will uh, fall into this uh, statement in, the, in this into this condition. Okay. Um, as you can see, uh, uh, to achieve the second condition, we just need to use another pattern uh, with the color. And then, uh, in this step, you can see that we have an uh, if statement in the middle. This is called ma uh, match guard, guard um, which means that even though the pattern matches, if the guard returns false, I won't execute that, that block. Last but not least, um, Whenever we put a standalone variable in a match clause, it will always match. This is just catch all. Um, this proposal is very extensive, and we can do a full talk only talk about this feature. Uh, I hope I can explain this deeply later in an article, but for now, um, you can check this proposal uh, proposal repository. It's full of examples. You can check that out. Um, even though the pattern matching is powerful you should not forget to use the right tool to the right job. Remember our uh, weather example? Looks how it looks using pattern matching proposal. So not every, uh, everything's a nail when you have a hammer. Uh, just to wrap, wrap it out, um, should we use all of this in production? As you can see, this proposal uh, are, are full of aspects that still are still unsettled. Um, the adoption of one may or may not reshape the semantics or, or uh, of the other, or could completely remove the other. 
So the, uh, the, the question is, could you use this in production? My answer is not yet. Um, these are my contacts. I wrote an, a deeper article on, on Smash Magazine uh, about uh, the bind operator. I will plan to do the same for the, uh, the other proposals. And whew, only 12 seconds later, thank you. 